Hey guys, Turk here. Hope you're having a great day. Sorry for the quick pivot. We were going to be doing our 5700G APU review here on the channel, but guys, Epic Games just launched their latest Unreal Engine 5 early preview, and they've actually got access to the Valley of the Ancients project file, so we can actually get our hands on some actual gameplay from this next generation engine. So, we're going to be taking a pivot. We're only going to briefly talk about some of the features with Unreal Engine 5, but we're going to dive deep into the code, make some changes to the project file, and we're going to actually make our game, and we're going to do a performance analysis to see what this next generation game can actually do when it comes to FPS. It's got some steep PC requirements, but guys, it's going to look pretty dang good. Stick around. Now, Unreal Engine 5 is not a stranger here on the channel, and we have covered it actually in our ray tracing video as well as our next generation console versus PC video. Now, there's plenty of videos here on YouTube that talk about the specifics of the new engine. Now, I do want to cover some of the techniques and technologies that I think are pretty dang cool. Now, the first one's going to be nanites, and that is Unreal Engine's way of giving us the ability to see almost infinitely more detail as we zoom into objects. Now, again, go and check out some of the details and other videos about this. But one thing I want to comment on here is that, you know, we really haven't seen nanites being enabled on a grander scheme because most of the demos we've seen have been in limited in scope. We've been on rails on most of these. But guys, with Valley of the Ancients, we get to see it across the entire world in both the overworld as well as the dark world. As we zoom around through the desert area, now each of these rocks has been actually scanned from rocks here in the real world, for, I think around in Utah, and they're being put together in what are called mega assemblies. And so what's really crazy is that as you go through the engine, you can click on each of these little models and it'll actually pull up a bundle of rocks that is based off of real world stuff. And once they've compiled it all together, guys, this, this just looks so dang cool. When you're far away, it looks awesome. And even when you zoom in, like we're in this fireplace area, guys, it just looks so fantastic. It's really spectacular. Now, I was watching some of the Digital Foundries videos before I started recording this, and what I found really interesting was that the developers of this particular project, it wasn't Epic Games, it was someone else, uh, they actually incorporated nanites into the boss's mesh structure. And as we defeat the boss towards the end of the demo, as we walk into this, guys, you can see that level of detail. And what's crazy is that level of detail it had been there the whole time. So nanites is really fantastic. And if you guys have followed the channel, you guys know I love me some ray tracing. And what's great about Lumen, guys, is it's software-based ray tracing, which means if you've got a lower-end GPU all the way up to the best and greatest RTX graphics cards, Lumen's going to be able to give you guys access to some wicked ray tracing, and that is enabled inside of this demo. What's really awesome here too is that it's not even required to pre-bake any of the lighting into any of these scenes. You simply go into your project settings and say, I guys, I want lumen lighting. And that's really awesome because it, it helps the developers create really dynamic uh, lighting scenarios. And as we're flying around through the desert, you get to see all of the time of day lighting changing and, and the lighting, it's just phenomenal. Now there are some limitations as we're in the early access preview, but guys, Lumen looks really promising. Now, if ray tracing wasn't enough, Unreal Engine 5 has access to the TAA upsampling technology. Now, it's not as good as DLSS, which is NVIDIA's upscaling technology. TAA now allows us to use scaled resolutions within our engine and gives us access to pretty stunning visuals at lower computational costs. By enabling this particular feature, we're able to get 4K-ish like visual quality while running in kind of like a 1080p performance target. Now this is gonna be really helpful when making cross-platform development games. And we in fact get to see this now on the Xbox Series X with this latest project release. And since we're on next generation hardware with some next generation tech, let's talk about load times and get a glimpse of what direct storage is gonna taste like. Now, we've actually gone and pre-compiled this particular project into its own executable file. And guys, once we load it up, load times are a snap. And even when we go from the light world into the dark world, it only takes quite a few seconds on our NVMe drive to go and switch our different environments, which is amazing because with, with this new technology, we're gonna see some pretty drastic changes when it comes to development in particular games. However, though, without that technique, there are quite a few hurdles we have to jump through. And I think that is why the PC requirements for this particular project, they're really steep. Now, if you already haven't clicked on the link down in the description below, I'll give you guys a brief disclaimer of what the requirements are going to be. Now, 
Buckle your seatbelts and hold on to your chairs, guys, because it is steep. If you're going to be running this on your particular PC without doing the pre-compiled stuff, it's going to require you guys to have a 12-core uh, processor that runs at least at 3.4 gigahertz. Now, I know 12 cores does sound like a lot, but if you're going to be doing any kind of development work, it really helps to have that extra hardware on hand. The only saving grace there though is that it only needs to be running at 3.4 gigahertz. So I imagine if you have an eight core or a 10 core processor and it's going like 4.5 gigahertz, I think you might still be in the clear. Now, the other really impressive stat here is the amount of RAM that's required. Like I was mentioning earlier, without direct storage enabled, we need to have enough uh, space in our RAM in order to load that into our graphics cards. And if you're gonna be running this on your development rigs, guys, 64 gigabytes of RAM is required to run this smoothly. Now, I don't have access to any 16 gigabyte sticks for my particular PC, so I am only gonna be running at 32 gigabytes at DDR4-3200. And from what I can tell through looking through hardware info, it wasn't that big of a deal, but if you're gonna be editing and running this through the live browser, you might be hitting some pretty difficult times. Now, the only saving grace and what I actually found pretty startling here, guys, is that the GPU requirements are pretty shallow. Uh, on the minimum side, they only require you to have like a GTX 1080 or like an, a Vega 64. Those, those are some pretty old graphics cards. And even for the recommended settings, they're only asking for like an RTX 2080, which is kind of equivalent to like an RTX 3060 or even an RX 5700 XT graphics card, which is a pretty decent 1440p card. So for our testing today, we are gonna be using our RTX 3070, which is, you know, it's not the top of the line, but it is pretty dang good and it's affordable, right? Now, in order to do a proper analysis, I had to do a couple extra steps in order to get this game to run in its own pre-compiled executable. Now, by doing that, I'm actually able to change some of the settings using some hotkeys on my keyboard in order to change the rendered scale resolution output, the post-processing effects, the anti-aliasing quality, the shadow quality, as well as the texture quality. I'm gonna be looking at all these different variables and posting the charts on the screen here. I'll post some links down below in case you wanna get the software required to compile this project and run it by yourself. Now a huge disclaimer guys, this is kind of a tech demo so any of the performance numbers we're going to be showing today are should only be taken at face value. Not every game that's built off of Unreal Engine 5 is going to perform like this. I do want to highlight however how some of the Unreal Engine 5 options impact the different performance we can expect and highlight some of the opportunities for these developers in order to squeeze out additional performance while still getting some really stunning visuals. Now the lever that's gonna have probably the most impact on our frame rate today is going to be the render scale resolution setting. If you're gonna be going with the epic settings, that's gonna to map to a 100% scaled resolution. And for us at 4K, that's 2160p. Now, if we go down to, I think it's the medium setting, that's gonna be right at 50%, which is kind of equivalent to 1080p. And of course, if you're going for the highest frame rates as possible, down to low at 25%, here we're even below 720p. So what I did was I took four different instances of this particular project file, and I did collect a little bit of data here. So the sitting instance is where we're sitting by the campfire before we go and launch the drone. And of course, the drone section is where we're actually in the open world and the overworld, and we get to see the huge expanse of the desert and all the rocky formations. Now, once we transition into the dark world, we're gonna be doing a quick little loop uh, before the first destructible asset. Now with the boss, we are gonna be activating the boss and he's gonna start shooting his laser beams out of his hand. And we're just gonna do a couple quick dodges in order to capture that frame rate. Now, one thing I find interesting here is when we're in the drone instance, our 1% lows, they are floating right around 30, uh, 36 FPS across the board, but we do start to see the frame rate start to taper off once we get to the lower settings. Other than that, the rest of the resolutions do scale pretty linearly, and as we're sitting there by the campfire, we do see our tighter FPSs going across the board. Now, clearly the most stressful spot in this particular game is going to be the boss section, but for ease of use and getting more repeatable results, I will be doing some data in the Dark World intro. Lighting is a huge emphasis for Unreal Engine 5, especially with their Lumen technology. And sure enough, we have access to four different settings here with their shadow quality. And what I find fascinating here is sure, the low setting provides pretty awesome frame rates at our 4K display, but guys, this quality setting, it just looks bad. 
But what I find really interesting here is even when we go to the medium setting, we get probably close to 80% of the quality of the shadows from our particular gameplay. Now I'm choosing the dark world here in particular as we go from medium to high, we start to see some of the fog lifting up off of the ground. And as we go from high to epic, we actually see how that fog impacts the ambient light and it actually brightens up our scene quite a bit. But from a performance perspective, it's really interesting that we only lose about six FPS going from medium to epic. However, though, I would recommend going with the high setting, if not the epic setting. Now, if you guys are running some six gigabyte graphics cards, ugh, I hate to break it to you, but if you're gonna be wanting to run this demo, you will be needing to run with at least an eight gigabyte card. And even with that, we are seeing error messages popping up in our game as we cycle through the different settings. Now, this could be kind of related to, you know, we were saying we don't have direct storage in implemented, but after you give it enough time and the textures pop in, you are able to distinguish the quality differences between the low, medium, high, and epic settings. <laughs> We're only losing two FPS by going with the epic setting. So guys, if you are developing games and you're using some of these similar textures in your game, man, keep your settings up at the epic setting. Anti-aliasing has been around the industry for a long time, trying to get those, those jaggedies out of our straight lines. And what I find interesting here as we're cycling through this gameplay footage, when we're in our low setting here in the dark world, we actually can see some pretty sharp detail when we're looking at that little, uh, the ruinous entrance into our area down there. But as we turn on the different settings, we, st we do start to see a little bit more softness in the edges, but it still looks really good in both close up rock formations as well as far away. Unfortunately though, as we start to increase our anti-aliasing quality settings, we do drop a few different frames and probably the least consequential setting that we have access to here in this demo is going to be the post FX quality. And to be honest, going from low to medium, it only looks like we're getting access to kind of like a vignetting thing where we get some extra shading around the corners of our uh, screen. So, I mean, we don't lose a lot of FPS by going to the other different option settings. So as long as you're running with the medium setting in your particular game, you should be in the clear. So now that we've covered what each of the different quality presets looks for the individual settings we have, let's see what a quote quality preset would look like. So for epic setting, we're gonna be running with everything set to the highest setting, going to high, it'll be the next highest, et cetera, et cetera. And what's stunning here, guys, is we actually see like an exponential uh, explosion when it comes to our frame rate performance. And if you're gonna be going for a 60 FPS gameplay on our RTX 3070, I definitely recommend going with the medium settings. And let's be honest, guys, at what, a 50% resolution scaling, as well as all the rest of the detail, almost indistinguishable. It's a pretty decent compromise when it comes to graphic quality versus performance. And as high of a frame rate we saw with that low setting, I will highly recommend not running low settings. You're running with no shadows enabled with throughout your entire scene, which let's be honest, Unreal Engine 5 is for the lighting improvements, so why disable it, right? So it's got that turned off, and then you're also running at a 25% resolution scaling, which is like 540p, which is like super... Uh, pixelated and it looks like really bad. However, though, if you wanted to clean that image up quite a bit, you can utilize the temporal anti-aliasing upscaling technology, but you do have to use the high level of anti-aliasing in order for that to kick in. Still, it looks pretty bad, but if you want to clean that image up, that option is there for you. With our 5900X installed with our RTX 3070 as our graphical horsepower, we're able to get with all settings set to the epic setting, we get right at 38 FPS, which is actually right at the target FPS that we were gonna be seeing from the recommended settings. And what I would recommend, if any of you guys are gonna build this on your own, set it up with the medium settings. That's gonna be using the 50% uh, resolution sc scaling, as well as using some of that temporal aliasing upscaling. And it's a pretty decent image and it's got pretty decent graphical quality. And what's most optimistic, guys, is with my particular setup, I'm at right at 72 FPS, which makes me really optimistic of all the different types of games we're gonna see coming from Unreal Engine 5. Now, this is an early access build of this particular engine as well as the project, so there's plenty of optimizations to be done. I noticed some depth of field issues as I was floating around in the desert where in one instance, I was completely out of focus and then I move like a little bit to the right and it's completely in focus. There's definitely gonna be instances where developers are gonna be providing feedback to Epic and we're gonna get 
we're going to get some more updates on the engine. So guys, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. We might do some more analysis. If y'all want to see your particular graphics card tested, post a link down below. I've got uh, my GPU hierarchy list. It'll tell you what graphics cards I have access to. So if y'all want to see that kind of performance, let me know and I'll hop on it and post the, some comments down in the community tab. And again, guys, I've got that 5700G review coming down the pipe. Uh, I've got all the charts made, like I said, in the community tab, 25 different graphics charts, 35 different CPU charts. So it's going to be a bunch of cool data coming down the pipe. So guys, thank you for watching the video. I hope you all had a great time. We'll catch you in the next one. See you.